What's up, everyone? Welcome to another NGT video. I am Aiden, the Cybersecurity Instructor. Today, we are covering Bash internal shortcuts, as well as some default key bindings that ships with the default Kali Linux. And to help us in this quick guide video is our quick guide. Uh, in the description, there will be a link provided for you guys. And there we go, there's our quick guide. And like I was saying, in the description, there is going to be a link uh, for a PDF and PNG. Uh, so if you are interested in, say, placing it as your background until you memorize it, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, in, the exam in the guide, we have an example bash and terminal shortcuts, uh, shortcuts for Kali and Windows placement shortcuts. But I don't expect you to read all this and memorize it. Let's show you a working example. Uh, but before we show you a working example, or I show you a working example, let me show you what we are trying to avoid. Uh, throughout a session, you'll need to pull up the terminal to run commands. Uh, and I have observed this to be a common practice in beginners. And I believe this was something I did when I was new to the fray. And it looks a whole lot like this. So I opened up a terminal. Uh, I opened up a Firefox window right here. And then I open up another terminal window and I just click it right there. And I go about, oh, so let's say LS and LA. And then I, let's say I cat some information here. Let's go ahead, open up this configuration file. Like so, okay, great. And I put that away and I go do my Googling thing. And I look up GitHub or something like that. All right, GitHub. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let's go look for a GitHub repository. Uh, GitHub Air Geddon. That's kind of funny. My Air Geddon video on YouTube the other day just got uh, deleted for safety purposes. I guess I suppose that new guidelines are in on YouTube now, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, so, okay. So, okay. All right. So uh, now I want to download this repository. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this right here. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and open up another window. And I go, let's see, git clone. And then control, control shift V. And I download that. And then what do you know? I might need, while that's running, I need to do an if config. And this is an absolute nightmare to me because I have so many things going on. I'm going to get myself lost. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid this and get you guys to be a bit more organized. Uh, and again, this is coming from a place of care because when I was brand new, I did this exact same thing. And the problem was I had so many things on my screen, I could not keep track of them. So what I want to show you is how to do this entire process and a couple of other additional things without all the clutter. So first and foremost, instead of using, let's say, the icon over here, let's go ahead and use the terminal shortcuts. Okay, so let's use our terminal shortcuts and let's go ahead and bring this back up right here. So how, uh, how do we bring about a well, it's rather easy. It's basically Control Alt T, and we can open a command line window. This is the default binding in Kali Linux. It could be different in other versions or distributions of Linux, but let's go ahead, press Control Alt T, and that brings us a nice little window right here, which is the same size as the last window that I had, and I terminate. Now, the problem with this is that it is taking, well, what percentage is that? Let's just say it's taken up 50% of all the available real estate. And, you know, in all reality, I want to take up all of the visual real estate in my screen because why not, right? Uh, there's no there's no purpose for this blue background over here. And there's no purpose for this one over here. So what we can do is utilize our shortcuts to can meta key. And when I say meta key, I mean the Windows key. And what I mean the Windows key is Windows key. Right here, we go to images. That key right there. Most of you guys are fairly familiar with that key. So we use that key. And I use Windows key right, left, up to essentially place the screen appropriately on my desktop. In this case, I just press Windows key, Windows key left, and Windows key right to move it around. And while we're at it, this does apply for all windows. So in this sense, I'm going to go ahead and press Windows key right, and I am going to go ahead and have 
now my visual real estate reclaimed on my desktop to be 50% bash or 50% terminal and then 50% browser. Ah, isn't that so much nicer? All right. So in the course of your day, you'll probably need to do several commands. So in this case, let's go ahead and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and send a ping on over to 4.2.2.2. And we can keep on going. Well, this is going to keep on going forever if we don't stop it. Now, we can press Control-C as part of the terminal shortcuts. Control-C to terminate it. Okay, great. And we can just keep going. Or if we want to suspend the process, we can press Control-Z. And this takes it out to the background. Now, in here, if I ever want to bring it back, I can just say, type in FG, and it will bring it back from its pause state. Now. This is great and all, but do I really want to commit a full 50% of my screen for a ping? Probably not. So in the, in the case, what if I need to do something else, right? Well, easy. There's a way to multiplex your screen within your terminal shortcuts. And when I say multiplex, that basically means multiple shells in one actual session. So we can press Control Shift D and Control Shift R to horizontally or vertically split our screens. Now, Control Shift D is going to horizontally split your screen. So in this case, now I have this ping command here and I want to keep that. What if I want to create, you know, let's go ahead and say, what if I want to start a TCP dump to view all the packets arriving at my Ethernet Zero adapter? So I can just say sudo TCP dump interface ethernet zero oops and i made a typo and there we go let's provide the credentials all right well fantastic now i have two commands running in one terminal or one multiplex terminal what if i want to go oh you know what i completely forgot what my ip address is how am i going to go ahead and verify with my ip addresses of course i could start another window right here but uh, I like to minimize the number of actual terminals I have. So I can press Control Shift R to split the screen or this bottom multiplex screen into a vertical. So let's go ahead, press if config, right? So, all right. Now, what about that git clone request? Where, where am I going to exactly do that? Well, there's also another feature in most modern day systems where we can create tabbed shells so we can press control alt uh, control shift t right here control shift t and create a brand new tab now of course everything is running in this screen and now we can basically go git or cd downloads first and foremost and git clone control shift v and now we can keep on running here and i can just start using this easy peasy lemony squeezy Okay, what if we want to go ahead and hit the up arrow right there and get to our last command? And what if we need to edit this command here? Now, of course, we can just do this, press left arrow, right arrow to move across our command. Uh, but as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, five seconds to get from the very end of our command to very beginning. So there's an easier way to do that. And we can do that by pressing control A. And this will move my cursor to the very beginning or control E will move my cursor to the very end of the command. Again, this is very small, but however, this will save you time and keep your thought process intact. Now, yes, uh, the, I find that a good number of times I do find my mind wandering in between commands. So being able to move quickly from one thought to another like this does allow me to be more efficient while working in the command line. All right, that should wrap up this video. I did not cover all the keyboard shortcuts and Windows bindings. However, feel free to go look about the added resource here. Ask me some questions if you do have any, any questions that come up. And again, this is Aiden. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from the quick guides. This has been at production from NGT Academy, and I can't wait for you guys to see or join me in the next video.
Jacob Hess here. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you, if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, then be sure to check out our IT engineer training programs at www.02engineer.com.